Hello everybody, my name's Rebecca and welcome back to My Bookish Travels. I know that I love filming book reviews and discussion videos because I love to share my thoughts on a specific book with you guys, but I also have come to realize that it's one of the lesser watched videos. My goal is to start making my review videos fun, but also trying to do something different with them every single time. Today I'm going to be focusing on the book Given by Nandi Taylor, and I I am going to do the entire review and discussion in points of three. So I'm only going to focus on three key points that I'm going to maybe expound on and from there be able to kind of share with you reasons why I really like this book and why I recommend you should read it as well. To start off with, I'm going to share a little short synopsis of what this book is about. We are following Yeni, who is a Yoruba warrior princess, and she ends up being granted a year's leave to go and explore and grow and develop, and she ends up going to the island of Kresh. While she's there, she ends up being exposed to so many things she is not aware of, and she also ends up coming in contact with dragon shifters who she thinks are extinct. So this becomes quite interesting when one of them tells her that she is his given. Basically, it is their one true love and they are meant to be and... Yenny is having none of that. The three key things that I would say that would definitely recommend this book to you. Number one, if you like reading dragon novels, this is for you. Number two, if you love fantasy, hello, Given is a YA fantasy. And number three, this has strong characters and extremely strong writing. I absolutely love it. And just a little shout out, this is the author's debut novel. So something to think about there, guys. It has no complaints on my end with anything in the story. I absolutely love it. There are certain things that were said that did not give me, you know, all the answers that I wanted. But if the author decided that this should not just be a standalone, but that she wants to write more in the story, I would gladly pick up another book by her and definitely read that. While I was reading this novel, there were three key emotions that I felt at all times during the reading of this novel. The first, obviously, is happiness. I loved this book so much. The second thing is heartbreak. I felt so much heartbreak. And the third emotion was definitely anger. I definitely had a few times when reading this book, I was so angry. I was just like, we're done. <laughs> At least with the character that I was reading about, I was like, I'm done. So discussing three of the character types and how I felt about them when I was introduced to them for the first time, the main characters are Yenny and Weish, who I loved as the main characters. I love that we get the POV for both of them. The next were the side characters. I absolutely loved Hearth and Zuai as the secondary side characters. I just want more of them. I love them together. I love them in the story and the roles that they played. And they weren't just, you know, on the sidelines. They were pulled into the story as well, which made it so good. And obviously the third are the characters that I just did not like from the start of the story when they were introduced. The first was Noriego and the second was Devin. I did not like them at all. At this point in time, I have discussed the sets of threes that are non-spoiler related. When this book disappears from the screen, I am going to be jumping into a spoiler discussion of threes of sorts. I do want to let you guys know that at this point in time, if you decide to proceed and spoil yourself, I really don't think it's it's a good idea because this novel is so well done. It is a, a 400 plus page book. It is worth every read and you 
deserve to give yourself the chance to not be spoiled, so I hope you don't proceed if you have not read this book. All right, so I have three different sets of threes that I'm going to discuss in this spoiler discussion, but I'm hopeful to keep them short. And I hope that you guys will, at the end of this video, feel comfortable enough to share some of your thoughts and feelings on this book because I definitely want to gush with more people who have read it. If you haven't liked it, maybe you can share why you didn't. If you did like it, I would love to hear why. And let's jump in. So the first thing that I'm going to discuss are the three emotions and scenes that definitely brought those emotions out the most prominently with me. So let's start off with the easiest one, which is the happiness side of my emotions. So this ended up being every single Yenny and Waish scene. I just love the fact that Waish was completely taken with her from the start and I don't even think that it had anything to do with the fact that she was his given. I think that did weigh a little heavier but just based on how he was responding to her it, it definitely shows that he he did love her and I love that they show that his insta love because she's so realistic and because Yenny definitely went from hate to love with him. She's so upfront and blunt with him that he started to realize that as someone that he actually did like. He needed to know more about her and it definitely helped. And I actually like tabbed every single scene between the two characters that I was like, I love you guys so much. The other bit that brought tons of happiness was the Waish and Hearth friendship. Those bros were so good. <laughs> I just cannot get enough of them. I definitely want more. I would read an entire book about how Waish and Hearth became friends. Like that is how much I love this friendship. I love how strong it is and how it does not dwindle. Again, this is something in the book that's really great. The friendships and side characters don't just, oh, the romance appears and they're gonna disappear. They're actually pulled into this and they're a part of that and it's just so good. Okay, let's move on to the not so happy topic, pun intended there, and talk about the scenes that caused so much heartbreak for me. So much heartbreak. Ugh, so much heartbreak. All right, so the first and obvious one is Weish's loss of his scent. And that was so heartbreaking because you got to see how it affected his character and and Yenny, how it kind of affected her that he no longer had that uh, ability. It was just so heartbreaking when that happened and they finally like saw each other again and I don't want to like tear up or anything. Oh my goodness. I just, I can't. Oh, there's so much heartbreak that takes pay place with Waish in this story. The loss of the scent is just the beginning of it and then you have when his mom tells about the past and that's heartbreaking as well because Waish is, is processing this and I am literally tearing up right now. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, he, he even mentions that like he kept his hair longer so that he didn't look as much like his, his birth father. And you also have the situation with Waish and Mont Mont. Perry, I am going, I cannot pronounce his name. I can pronounce it in my head, but vocally it's just like, nope. Words and, and mouth do not connect. Waish and Mont Perry, you understand why they always kind of go head to head. And you also understand why the two of them do have so much unresolved. And the author does a really good job of explaining a lot of things and doesn't just leave it up to you to figure out, such as being a given or the runes and how they work. Or even with regards to Waish and Mont Perry, you've got that being explained, but you don't have it being resolved, which makes sense because this is going on for X amount of years for the two of them being at odds with each other. So again, moving on, let's, let's take like a left turn from the heartbreak side of this story and move on to what makes me really angry because there are a couple of scenes that I was furious 
at. And that's good because it means the author definitely brought my emotions out into the story. But it also is one that I was just like, mm, I just, there needs to be a smackdown that happens here. Well, obviously, the first one is going to be when Noriego stole that's how I'm putting it. I'm sorry. He stole. He didn't just, you know, destroy it. He stole the ability for Waish to be able to smell. And that was cruel and so heartbreaking, but so frustrating. Like, oh, I just kind of wanted to sucker punch Noriego at that point. I was like, I'm done with you, dude. I've hated you from the start. I'm done. I'm done. And then obviously... Devin. Every scene he was in from the start of the book, like, I did not like him. I didn't like him with how he was, you know, interacting with Yanni. I, ugh, it was weird. He was weird. He was just frustrating. Like, I realized even at the start when he had that item fall and almost, you know, kill the other professor, I was like, mm. No, this is not just a by chance or an accident. He did that on purpose. Devin made me so angry. It's a scene when he uses his illusion runes and that voodoo doll. And I'm like, mm, I'm done. Like, you go, girl. And then, like, the reaction of people, like, when Yenny beat up the professor was hilarious. But when you actually look back at it, like, it's so frustrating and so angering that he did it that I'm glad Yenny got her her fight in there with him because I feel like it totally resolved everything between her and Devin. And I also found it very interesting. Like, the scenes that make me angry are the scenes between the two main characters with their own antagonist. So... It's interesting how the author didn't just have one antagonist, she had two, and she had it unique to the people that were our main characters. And it just goes to show how amazing this story is because she could fluctuate between the two of them so well and have them so unique and be able to resolve one where I'm like, yep, I, I don't need to see any more of that one. And then on the other hand, I'm like, I need to see more of Noriego and Waish because that doesn't feel resolved. You know, that's, those are, those were the scenes and those were the people that angered me the most. And it's just interesting how well those scenes worked and how they culminated in the the resolution of this book. And obviously, I cannot finish this video without talking about the three things that are unresolved that I would like to see if there was going to be more in the story. Obviously, the first thing is with Weish's sense of smell. I would love to be able to see something come back. I almost thought at one point that it would be illusion runes that would be used to, to falsify that, to allow him to feel that again, but that didn't end up happening. So I'm wondering if there is the ability for it to be fully healed, especially since at one point he does state, oh, well, it is somewhat helping. I think that I've maybe gotten it back. And you do kind of get a feeling that this is going to be something that's going to be worked on because Carmena is planning on working to do that as a healer because that's what she's going to school for. So you kind of feel like there's more to this where this is going to be something that's going to happen because it is something that's vitally important to Waish as a dragon and in general it's very important to a dragon for his sense of smell. The second thing is the dream that Yenny had where she went back to the village and there's that parade and Waish is flying above and then all of a sudden there's a war that seems to take place right then and there and Waish is shot. That very much felt like a premonition dream and I want to find out what's going to happen because you do get the feeling that Waish and Yenny are going back to the tribe to go and visit the family. I am so nervous that that is a premonition and I need to know how it's resolved because I have the same feeling that Yenny does right now. It is of great worry and it's only in a book but the thing is it's of worry to Yenny and it's of worry because she and Waish love each other and you don't want that to happen but it definitely felt very premonition-esque. And the third 
on this list would be Waish and Montperry's relationship. Now, I actually do appreciate the fact that the author didn't have it be fully resolved between the two of them at the end of this book. Because let's be honest, this is something that has been a burden to the two of them for many, many years. So it does not make sense for this to all of a sudden be resolved in a 400-page book in less than a year. Just doesn't make sense. It does not make sense for it to have been resolved. But it is something that I feel like they're slowly working towards being able to look at a resolution because of the fact that this has now been exposed, this has now been discussed, and they have been able to kind of hit that point where everything is presented and you have to decide how you're going to take that knowledge and be able to move forward. So I really get the feeling that this is going to be something that could be further developed if there's another book. So there you have it. That is my review for Given by Nandy Taylor. I definitely feel that as a debut novel, this was fantastic. This was everything that I think readers normally have a complaint about being dealt with in the book. So for this, as I said, very little complaints on my end for things that I didn't like, but I did end up giving this four out of five stars. The more that I think about it, I feel like it could be a five star for me, but I definitely gave it the four out of five at the time that I finished it because I went into it thinking it was a standalone, and by the time I finished it, because of there being certain things that I felt were unresolved and that could be carried through into another book... I feel that this was a 4 out of 5 because it definitely didn't feel like a standalone, but I can definitely support the author if she chose to maintain this as a standalone rather than continuing a series. Also, I can completely state that I will support her if she decides to write more in this series because I feel that there could be more, and I think she's a fantastically gifted author, especially if you've read this before. So that is my review. I would love to discuss more with you guys in the comment section down below. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you then. Bye.